Greetings, Ruby people. Welcome to my channel. I'm the self-proclaimed blue dragon, and boy, what a long, strange trip it's been. I'm back with another voiceover video, and since I don't have my camera set up just yet, this image in the background that I'm inking is a Dark Horse Act 4 revamp page, which has already posted. Just a warning, my videos target an adult audience. They tend to focus on my free, not safe for work web comics. This video is titled Journey to the West, and I'm going to be focusing on uh, just kind of an update as to why I've kind of been away if you haven't been watching the videos. And then also I'm going to talk about why I chose Oregon for the setting of Dark Horse. So I'm still a little frazzled and disorganized from our move. My partner and I moved here from St. Louis, Missouri to Oregon State. It's a little bittersweet because I was starting to make some friends and people that I know online from Comic Fury. We're still going to be friends and stuff, but it was kind of nice having that human interaction and then Obviously, besides the move, we've um, got a major situation on our hand with the coronavirus. So, But at the same time, we are very fortunate and very happy and have no complaints for being able to make it out here safe. That's the explanation for why I've kind of been away from the channel and have been no voiceover. All of our stuff is finally here, though. It came on Monday, and we've been getting things set up. My office is now set up. I have my audio back, you guys. There's several reasons why I chose Oregon for the setting of Dark Horse. I've always had kind of a fascination with the West. My dad was actually born in Washington State. My paternal grandfather was from either Southern Illinois or Indiana. I, I don't really know for sure. But my paternal grandmother was from the Philippines. So maybe they chose Washington as kind of a halfway mark. They lived there for a while because my, my dad is the third child of like seven kids who survived. There were nine kids, but two of them passed away shortly after being born. But um, I don't know for sure. It's kind of blurry because my grandfather had died before I was born and we didn't really have too much to do with my dad's side of the family for personal reasons. But at some point they moved to the Midwest, to Illinois, probably to be closer to my paternal grandfather's family. And then my dad was raised in Springfield, Illinois, and that's where he met my mom. Now in the 70s, they moved out to Oregon, but for health reasons, my mom had to move back to the Midwest. So my mom and I were very, are still very close. And in high school, we talked a, a lot, and she would tell me stories of her youth. And when I graduated high school, um, by that time, my dad had been kind of forced into early retirement. Illinois is a hot mess. I'm not going to get into that. But he was working for a private company and actually making more money at that point. And with my older sister and I out of the house, they were able to save up enough money to give my sister a post-graduation present of taking her to New Orleans and then taking myself. Actually, my mom took me to Oregon first, and then they planned their New Orleans trip with my sister. So I actually got to experience Oregon firsthand and I've always been kind of a nature gal. I always liked being out in the woods. So when my mom took me here and dad later took off a couple of days of work and, and drove back, took a plane out and drove with us back home. But I just fell in love with it out here. Both the coast and just the forest, the cities are very, it's very green and have always been I've always been fairly fond of my green. <clears throat> reference this video. Oh wait, I can't reference this video. I have a video where I'm, I'm painting a green man. But yeah, so I fell in love with this area, but but that, that was only a portion as to why I chose Oregon for the setting of this comic. I've talked about this a little bit in previous videos, and please forgive the subject matter as being possibly insensitive due to the pandemic that's going on right now, but I've been working on this comic since uh, the early 2000s, 2003, 2005, so please, if, if anyone out there has either you know, had the virus or has known someone or has even known people who've passed, please forgive the insensitivity of me talking about this right now. But if I'm going to, Word of Wednesday, expound upon the world of Dark Horse, I'm going to have to talk about why I specifically chose Oregon as a base for the reconstruction of the U.S. following the plague. So again, forgive me if this seems a little insensitive talking about this now, but it's kind of hard to avoid it since the whole story kind of is set in motion due to that, um, if that makes sense. 
but, you know, while I'm not what you would really consider a survivalist or, you know, an off gritter kind of person, I, I am a, I'm kind of an odd mix of being an extrovert. I, I love to socialize. I love to be around people. But I also quite often like being a bit of a recluse and just wanting to recede from the world and be done with humanity and, you know, live out in the woods. I... <laughs> It's kind of weird. I, I guess some people are like that. Um, I guess we're all kind of a blend of different things, but I, in college, was very influenced by the transcendentalists. I, although ideally I would like to be more like uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, I'm probably a lot more like Thoreau, who Thoreau's kind of a controversial guy because well, he talks about, you know, he has the, his book Walden where he's like, you need to get away from society and reconnect with nature and be self-sufficient. Everything that he did was kind of, he relied on other people to provide the wood for his cabin and stuff. So he's a little bit of a hypocrite, but at the same time, I love his works and I, I don't think he was necessarily a bad person. It was just, you know, I, I, I can come to terms with the fact that he might have been preaching one thing, but living in another. <laughs> but um, I, I was very influenced by that whole idea of getting back to nature and being self-reliant and, you know, kind of understanding your surrounding and getting away from urban centers. So that's something that's always kind of turned me on, or I've always been turned on to, I should say. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so when I was thinking of what kind of setting would be ideal for a situation where society has collapsed, Oregon, in my mind, was perfect because you do have so many natural resources, it's a temperate climate, you can grow things year-round, even though it does get colder, obviously, in the winter. It's not like Illinois, where you can be dumped several inches of snow and there's no way you're going to be growing anything. I've done a lot of research and even went so far as to buy like the SAS survival handbook, although that was by a British author, it's, it's applicable to other areas. And also how to survive in the woods, I'll put references down in the description. Anyway, as sort of a woods woman, you know my last name is Woods, it's a bad joke, but I, I really wanted the setting of Dark Horse to be an, an ideal area for scavenging and foraging and growing and you know an area where it would be a little bit easier for society to start rebuilding than if it were like I said somewhere in the Midwest where it, it gets too cold for that. So Dark Horse is going to touch upon the survivalist theme of the apocalypse but since their central villain is kind of barreling down upon them I'm not going to be dealing with the rebuild quite so much in Dark Horse. We're going to see a bit of it here in Act 4 that I'm working on, but that's going to be tackled more so in Seishin, which is the second series. If I can finish all of this, the whole story is going to be four to five parts, starting with Dark Horse. And if anyone's been to my main website, you might be wondering why the title, it doesn't say Dark Horse, it says Crystal Lotus Chronicles. And that's because Dark Horse is the opening of the Chronicles, and it's going to be the longest section of the story, and then I'm going to deal with some other aspects of, of the world. So that's just a little bit of an explanation of why Oregon? <laughs> why did I pick that setting for the story? The question of the week is, what's your favorite place to visit? We can't go visiting places now, but as the Moody Blues say, thinking is the best way to travel, so what for you would be a great place for you to travel to once things start to settle down a bit with this virus? Personally, I don't live in Lincoln City. We are in Oregon, but we we do not live in Lincoln City, so I would like to go to Lincoln City, which is a beach town, or Chicago. I always love visiting Chicago. There's always so much to do there, and I, I love, I just love, I just like the culture of Chicago. I don't know, I mean, I'm from central Illinois, but I like it up north pretty well. Um, yeah, I think that about covers this week's topic. I want to give a big thanks to my amazing patrons. I've got a new person who just joined. Thank you so much. Thank all of you so much. I really appreciate it. During the move, my new desk that I just bought last 
here. They got, the top part got damaged a bit. It's nothing terrible, but it's thanks to you guys that I'm able to price and find a new desktop. Actually, my fiance is so kind. He's already started looking. He's looking for it before I am. I'm just working over the, the torn up bits and he's like, oh, we need to get you a new desktop. So it's thanks to you guys that I'm able to replace that part of the desk. Thank you. And if you would like to join their ranks, you may do so by going to any of the support links down in the description or you can help by liking, subbing, and doing the bell thing. I really appreciate that. As kind of a closing comment, I do want to, I want to extend my condolences to anyone who has lost a loved one, either to this crisis or otherwise. I mean, at this time, things are are bad, and even if you have a loved one who is passing from uh, more natural causes, I don't know if that's a good one, I don't know, like, you know, from a regular cause, not this virus, it's still a hard time to deal with that, so I do want to extend my condolences and send thoughts and it's not very helpful, but good vibes your way. I really hope, but I also pray <laughs> that you guys are holding out okay. Um, please be excellent to each other and keep safe. I've been seeing some great articles of how people are pulling together and helping each other out. So keep, keep those good vibes going. That's how we're all going to get through this. Peace and love. Fare you well and keep on trucking. <laughs>